Well, Crabo was started by my father 43 years ago. I joined the company 35 years ago, and uh, we originally started off manufacturing retractable tarping systems for dump trucks. We then moved into retractable thermal blankets for greenhouses, and then got into the outdoor retractable roof product line, where we started developing retractable shade houses, frost protection houses, then rain protection, fully fledged retractable roof greenhouses, and then finally retractable cooling houses uh, for the hot climates. Please help us understand the Cravo system better. Well, the Cravo system is, is, the whole retractable roof production system, I think, is, is completely different from a conventional greenhouse. Um, a conventional greenhouse has a stationary roof covering, and there may be either pad and fan cooling to try to cool it, or you will have a ridge vent that will open and close to change air. But the plants are always inside. And we believe that it's better to combine the advantages of nature, protection, and climate optimization. And so the philosophy behind the retractable roof system is that plants should be outside except when conditions are adverse. So for example, when temperatures are between say 15 and 28 degrees, every plant does very well outside where it's getting the full natural light levels, humidity and wind. But if it, temperatures are getting too cold, the plant growth will slow down and obviously if you have minus two, the plants will die. And conversely, when you have 35 degrees with high radiation, plants outside are suffering from excessive heat and water loss. If you're growing crops outside, you're also going to lose if you have hail, rain, or excessive wind. And so the retractable roof is designed to close automatically when it is too cold, when it is too hot, when there's rain, or risk of hail, or uh, too much wind. So basically, we're combining the advantages of growing outside with the advantages of a protected environment. This was uh, probably the most difficult thing for us to figure out was how to know when to automatically close or retract the roof. And in a conventional poly house, people are measuring the air temperature and the humidity and they're making decisions on the environment based on those two parameters. And philosophically, I guess, what we started to realize is it's not important what the air temperature is or the humidity is. It's important what the plant temperature is and how much water it's losing. So when people are managing air temperature and humidity in a conventional poly house, they're still running into problems with crop quality. So even if they're achieving their target air temperature and humidity, they're not getting necessarily the crop quality that they want. And so we realize there's a disconnect between what the air temperature is and what the plant temperature is. And there's a disconnect between what the humidity is versus the transpiration rate or how much water it's losing. And so when direct sun is shining on a plant, the leaf temperature is going to get higher, which is going to cause it to lose more water. The moment it loses more water, it's now increasing the nutrient uptake and it's moving all those nutrients into the, the extremities of the plant, particularly calcium, which is harder, a harder um, thing to move. You need a high rate of water flow in order to absorb that calcium and then move it into the fruit to prevent problems like blossom end rot. So blossom end rot, for example, you can have lots of calcium at the root system, but it didn't get into the fruit. And, and that's a function of the fact that the transpiration rate was too low. So even if you're hitting your target humidity levels inside, the transpiration rate could be too low, which is now causing your, your long inner nodes, your bigger leaf surface, and thinner wax cuticle and nutritional deficiencies. And so what we started to do is, is focus more on managing the plant not on managing the climate. And so we're looking at the development and the structure of the plant and saying, are we happy with how this plant is responding to the environment? And if we don't like how it's responding, we need to change the environment. So if the plant is growing too vegetative, we need to expose it to more outdoor conditions to increase the plant temperature, increase the transpiration rate, 
so the plant will have a higher level of water stress and that will then cause the plant to start to change its development. Or if the plant is under too much stress, we need to protect it more often, so we would be closing the roof more often to, pretend, to protect that plant from the direct sunlight or wind. So I guess the fundamental learnings we had over these years is you can actually achieve better results by focusing on the plant itself and less on the environment. Well, I guess the first thing is let's, let's think about when plants are growing outside in nature. And when the growing conditions outside are optimal, we see our plants are very resistant naturally to foliar diseases and insects attacks. But when the summer conditions start to get hotter and the humidity goes down, the plants start to lose a lot of water, which starts to create a water stress. And that's when we see the insects start to attack and reproduce more rapidly. So plants outside have a very strong natural defense mechanism until the outdoor environment becomes uh, too adverse and then the plants are no longer able to defend against the disease and the insects. And insects will attack when the plant is weaker because a weak plant is actually easier for the insects to penetrate. And if they're laying eggs into the leaves or into the fruit, a weaker plant is softer in, in, in structure, which means it's easier for the babies to eat. So insects will always tend to reproduce on a weaker plant. So compared to outdoors, when we use a retractable roof over an outdoor crop, by retracting the roof, we're allowing the plant to develop its natural defense mechanisms because it's being exposed to the natural conditions but then we're using the roof to protect from excessive rain or wetness or excessive heat and water loss in the middle of the summer. And by helping the plants stay full of water, the plants no longer are interested in reproducing on those plants because it's not interesting for them to lay their eggs on leaves that are too difficult for the babies to eat. Now, if we compare that to a crop that's growing inside a polyhouse, the plants are never exposed to outdoor conditions, so they never have direct ultraviolet radiation or ultra, uh, infrared radiation. They're never exposed to wind, and you have a high relative humidity inside compared to outside. And what that's doing is it's causing the plants to lose less water than they normally would outside. And when the plants don't lose a lot of water, then the plants are full of water, and they have a very low level of water stress. And so the plant will not develop the, the thick wax cuticle on the surfaces of the leaves because that thick wax is a protection against water loss. But if the plants aren't losing a lot of water, they don't need to protect themselves from losing a lot of water. Now, unfortunately, this thick wax cuticle is also the plant's natural defense mechanism against foliar disease and insects. So when you have a thick wax layer, it's more difficult for the fungal spores to penetrate that layer and it's also more difficult for the insects to penetrate and lay their eggs or eat. So when you're in a poly hothouse, the plants don't develop that natural defense mechanism. And so when you get insects coming into the house, and insects get into every house, like I've never been in a greenhouse where they never have insects coming in, but once they come in, going into a polyhouse is like a smorgasbord because there's many, many, many plants that are excellent hosts for babies. And so when you have a, a humid climate that's warm and a very soft plant, you've created excellent conditions for the plants to, for the insects to reproduce. And so this is where you have no insect pressure and then all of a sudden you get this explosion because you've created the perfect conditions for insects to reproduce. So when I'm talking to people and they say they're afraid of insects, I go, well, I'm not as af afraid of insects. I'm more afraid of weak plants. Because if I have a weak plant, I've created a perfect host for the foliar diseases and for the insects to reproduce. So uh, in, in a retractable roof production system, when we're focusing on trying to create the perfect environment for the plant using nature and using protection, not only are we getting a better balanced plant 
and better quality fruit, we're simultaneously increasing the plant's natural defense mechanisms to reduce the uh, attack of either foliar disease or insects. That's a great question, and this took us a long time to figure out. Um, in a normal poly house, uh, the primary sensors for a control system are air temperature and humidity. And a ventilation system like a, a gutter vent or ridge vent will open up when the inside temperature is getting too hot or it's getting too humid. And in a retractable roof, the philosophy is completely opposite because we're not thinking about the plants being inside and when we want to get them back outside. We're thinking plants should be outside at all times except when conditions are adverse. And so the first thing we did is we said, okay, we don't want to be focusing so much on what's going inside. We want to focus more on what's going on outside. And so the primary sensors are on the weather station. So if we go back to an open field grower, and here in India, of course, most farmers are growing in the open field and they're trying to extend their seasons to uh, supply earlier or later because that's when they get the better prices. And so in order to do that, they have to change their climate, but also protect from weather extremes. So when somebody's looking at an automatic retractable roof, they may, if they're coming from an outdoor open field environment, they're thinking about more when to close the roof to protect their crops. So an open field grower will want to close his roof when it's raining, if it's too windy, if it's risk of hail, or if it's too hot or if it's too cold. So the weather station from the retractable roof will have a rain sensor, a wind sensor, a barometric pressure sensor. So in, in the event of where risk is a, a, a risk, uh, a frequent risk, the barometric pressure normally drops before the hailstorm. So we're measuring the change in the barometric pressure. And so we can automatically close the roof if the barometric pressure changes uh, rapidly in a short period of time and that will help protect the plants from risk of hail damage. But the primary sensor that we're using uh, is a black plate temperature sensor that's measuring how much heat is available outside, uh, factoring in the air temperature, but also the heating effect of the sun. And so if this black plate is going below 12 degrees, for example, outside is becoming too cold, and so we're going to close the roof. And if the black plate temperature goes above 15, for example, well, it's no longer too cold outside, so the roof will retract 100%. And the plants are now outside getting full sunlight, lower humidity, some wind, so the leaves are drying off, the leaf temperature is going up, and the transpiration rate's increasing, so the plant activity is now going higher to move those nutrients and create that strong plant balance that we're looking for. Now here in India, when you start to hit your summer season, of course, you're getting a very high level of radiation. Your humidity can drop to say 20%, which is gonna to suck too much water out of the plant. So when that black plate temperature starts to get above 30 degrees, 35 degrees for say 10 minutes, we now know the plant is at risk of losing too much water and we don't want that. So the black plate will then tell the computer, hey, it's getting too hot outside, close the roof, 80%, 85%, 90% to block that sunlight so the plants are no longer in direct sun. So the whole philosophy behind the retractable roof control strategy is we want the plants to be outside. We want the computer to close when outside conditions are now negative for those plants. And then we will use an inside air temp sorry, inside humidity sensor to tell us what the humidity levels are inside. Because as you move from your summer to your monsoon season, your, your air temperatures may be 40 degrees, your relative humidity is 20. You need to increase those humidity levels during those hot, dry conditions in order to protect the plant from losing too much water. As you shift from summer to the monsoon season, your humidity levels are going up. So you went from too low of humidity to maybe too high of humidity. 
So now we want to change how the roof, uh, when the roof is closing or how far it's closing, because I may want to ventilate more when I have a high humidity inside. So as far as uh, the normal operation of the roof, we're using a black plate temperature sensor outside and we're using a humidity sensor inside. And those two sensors are going to be very effective at predicting what the leaf temperature is going to be and the rate of water loss is going to be.